Welcome to another edition of Around the Table with Stacey Smith as we take a look at the political scene. As we edge closer to November and the election day, the candidates have been debating and also advertising, trying to win your vote. The question is, are they making any inroads? That's one of the topics we're going to discuss today on Around the Table with Stacey Smith. And uh, here's my panel of analysts to discuss that topic and some others. And they are the uh, former and last Republican governor of Pennsylvania, Tom Corbett. Mr. Corbett also served as the Attorney General for the state of Pennsylvania and also as the U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Pennsylvania. Tom now teaches law at Duquesne University. Also a member of our panel is Jim Byrne. Jim is the Chairman Emeritus of the State Democratic Party in Pennsylvania. Jim served as the state chairman during a critical time for the party. He also served as president of Allegheny County Council and also was a long-term mayor of Millvale. Uh, Jim now is an attorney in town. And as we go around the table, we find Keith Schmidt. Now, Keith's background in politics goes all the way back to the Reagan presidency. Keith was the state director for former Republican Senator Rick Santorum in the state of Pennsylvania here. Uh, and Keith also served as Santorum on uh, advice Santorum's campaign uh, for the presidency in 2012. Keith has his own consulting firm. Seated across the table on the Democratic side is someone who I like to call the great philosopher of around the table. Joe is a guiding light for a lot of Democrats and has consulted on campaigns across the state. He also served in several roles in city government, including that as deputy mayor. Joe teaches law at Duquesne University, and you can read his thoughts on life and on politics every weekend in the Trib. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us once again for Around the Table. Hope you all are doing well and ready to talk about uh, the topics that we have today. Now, getting back to the local elections, the general consensus is that with a big edge in registered voters, the Democrats indeed have a big advantage in the fall election here in Allegheny County. But with less than a month to go before the election, there is a lot of talk that the contest for county executive and district attorney could be close. That's the question now for all of my analysts. Are the races indeed close and close or not? What is your prediction at the moment? Joe, I'm going to start with you. Well, we're seeing some unusual activity in the ranks of regular Democrats. Uh, there are uh, lots of yard signs in what are otherwise Democratic strongholds, uh, yard signs for uh, both uh, Rocky and uh, Zapala. There's some strong union support. Uh, the uh, powerful local 1058 of the laborers union and uh, the police uh, supporting Rocky and Zapala. Uh, some Democratic chairs are telling me that their committee members are balking at, at supporting the Democratic endorsed candidates. And they're telling them that they're going to vote for Rocky and Zapala. Uh, because they're alarmed by what they're seeing from the progressive agenda, not just in Pittsburgh, but across the nation. So something's going on here. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, it's not it's not a clear call on on these races, which in in and of itself is unusual here in Allegheny County. Well, I, I think that the good news for Republicans is we we were lucky enough to nominate two great candidates for these offices of county executive and uh, district attorney. Without question, I don't think anybody would challenge it. Joe Rocky and uh, Stephen Zapala are the most qualified candidates for these respective positions. That combined with the fact that I think the media coverage this fall has been pretty fair, pretty balanced, and, and with less people running and it now being the fall race when the focus changes, there's the, the airwaves is not as cluttered. It's easier to understand the candidates and the decision they make. So I think that's a clear advantage to the GOP because an educated voter is their both, excuse me, is their best chance to sweep both these races in a little over a month from now. Unusual dynamic that we haven't seen since 1995 and 1999 in the Democratic Party. Yes, we still have registration advantages. Uh, but there are some differences and some anomalies that, that harken back to that, that decade. Uh, in 95, there was a perception in certain demographics of the Democratic Party that the winners, Mike DeWita and Kuala Nguyen, did not need their help to win in the fall. It's playing out again. The moderate wing of the party has that perception. Does Sarah have enough time to fix that and work on that registration advantage? Yes, she does. And yes, I still think the Democrats have an edge in that race, however, slightly, uh, historically close. Uh, now, uh, also, when you talk about the district attorney race, uh, we're talking about a Democrat that was nominated by the Republicans, and not just any Democrat, a Democrat whose name, Zapala, has history and tradition in this county and across this state. 
It's one of those names that you hear in this county that you are familiar with, and it is associated with the Democratic Party as well. Uh, so you have that dynamic playing out. That's something else to watch for. And with issue, the issue, one of the number one issues polling being crime in the county and in particular in the city itself, uh, the advantage is going to be to whomever has the best message on handling that. And in my opinion, the better messenger on that issue is the nominee, Mr. Sapala, because folks, as the polling is suggesting, are moving away from progressive positions with respect to crime and law enforcement. So that race is going to be historically close. And as of right now, with like less than a month, that one's too close to call. And I would agree with everything that's, that's been said by my colleagues. Uh, this is not a conventional race. Part of the reason it's not is that you have a, a political uh, party or faction of a political party that has a demonstrated record, in my opinion, of failure in cities where they took over, Philadelphia, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Chicago, with their philosophy of, you know, we are progressives. I'm not sure what they mean by progressives because they're going backwards as far as I'm concerned when it comes to the safety of the, of the citizens of, Pennsylvania, of Pittsburgh and of all of Allegheny County. And so when there are uh, fears out there of turning into the next Chicago or Philadelphia, particularly here in Pennsylvania, and what's going on in the community, I think that's what's narrowed this race and will continue to narrow the race. And through education of the voters, people getting out there and talking about this race, I think that the Republicans have an absolute positive chance of winning this election. I guess the question would be, uh, for the Republicans or Steve Zapala, a Democrat running as a Republican, uh, to win, and I guess this goes back to Joe and uh, Jim's kind of comments here, uh, that, that you have to have some very dissatisfied Democrats in Allegheny County. Oh, not yeah, you do, and I think, I think that... Uh, What's going on in the city of Pittsburgh is probably the source of much of that frustration and disappointment in the Democratic Party. Uh, you know, they, we have a pretty good city here. Uh, you know, we have bragging rights for most of the time I've been a, a resident of the city of Pittsburgh or, or the region. And uh, in the last two years, it's not gone well. Uh, you know, that that vaunted reputation of ours is suffering some body blows, every, you know, every day. Just take a ride down Smithfield Street, 10 o'clock at night, look around and, and decide for yourself. Don't take my word for it. And certainly don't take Ed Ganey's word for it. Decide for yourself. You know, these are these are tough times in the city because of these progressive attitudes towards uh, law enforcement, towards justice. You know, well, a couple, a couple things are going to happen here. There, there, there's going to be a, a, a definitely a ginned up. Republican turnout this fall. You're going to see a, a higher than normal turnout because they feel like there's an opportunity here for the first time in the municipal election. And I remind everyone what you already know. There is no such thing as a swing Republican. There's only a swing Democrat. And Democrats in the suburbs are looking more and more like they're poised to swing. Some of it is what Joe said, the local stuff. You know, the fact that the, that these are two, these are Soros candidates, progressive candidates, that, 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 that whole mantra has not played out very well in the last two years in the city of Pittsburgh. And then you look at the national and international stuff that is not helping the progressives either. So both those allow them to not necessarily leave the Democratic Party a lot, as a lot of them are articulating, but they're, they're, they're staying away from what is the progressive wing of their party. It's easier to leave the party when a regular Democrat is no longer nominated. It is somebody that is extreme and not in tune with their beliefs uh, uh, and 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 where they think this this county should head. You know, I had a, a mentor when I first started as mayor of Millville in the 1990s, and I think you folks all know Senator Leonard Bodak. Uh, no, sure, Senator Bodak. I I, I know uh, he was county chairman for a while, and he used to give the speech, the big speech up in Sharpsburg the night, the Monday night before the general. And that was that was a big moment. Mayor Ferrero and the Ferreros in Sharpsburg and. Senator Bodak would come up there and he would say, we remember, see, yeah. Republicans vote Republican. Democrats vote Republican. Uh, and we're seeing that dynamic play out. Stacey, real quick to your answer or to your question about dissatisfaction. Yes, that's a factor, but not necessarily the only factor with respect to the Zapala race. That is a longstanding name, traditional in the Democratic Party. And with public safety being front and center, uh, folks are liking his message as, more so than they're liking uh, the Democratic nominee. All right, good. We have to take a, a break. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 